Hi there, it's Annie from Mountain Crest Gardens here. And if you've ever dreamed of growing your own indoor succulent jungle, I would highly recommend that you start off with some of the more forgiving, hard to kill succulent varieties, as opposed to jumping straight in and kind of overwhelming yourself with the more finicky, often more expensive rarities. And we have a whole section of our catalog devoted to these easy indoor succulents. But today I'm gonna go over a select few of my favorites from different categories. So things like low light, hanging and trailing, easiest cactus, things like that. And these are the same varieties that you would find absolutely covering my own house because you know, even if you're already a seasoned succulent grower, easy plants like this are gonna give you the freedom to completely expand your collection without drowning yourself in a lot of plant care. Additionally, I'm going to attempt to simplify the entirety of indoor succulent care into just three guidelines that every beginner and you know purported black thumb needs to know. So with these tips and the easier varieties, you're all gonna be able to enjoy the low maintenance, no fuss charm that is succulent houseplants. Let's go ahead and start with the easiest low light succulent because frankly, lack of light is the most common challenge I see people having with their succulents. So if you'll allow me to save my personal best for first, this here is Gasteria, the ultimate succulent houseplant. I think this particular one is a Gasteria bicolor, but forgive me, I lost the label a while ago. It happens. And anyway, Gasteria always have these really fun thick, robust, sort of tongue-shaped leaves. And they're amazing houseplants because they can tolerate that low light. They can also take a bunch of neglect, whether you go on vacation and forget to water them, or if you accidentally overwater a couple times, these ones are really resilient. Additionally, they don't have a lot of issues with pests. And I've seen this one just keep on growing even when it was sealed in a dark box for shipping for I think it was a month and a half. It was still putting off new offsets. It looked great. Obviously that's not ideal. That's not how you're gonna care for your plant. Same thing goes for like a windowless bathroom. This one will, will handle it for a while, but eventually we do want it in some light. But aside from that, it's really kind of the creme de la creme for low light succulents. Then I'll always give you a couple options. Over here, we have some of you may be familiar with jade plants. So that's Crassula ovata or Crassula arborescens, and they're phenomenal house plants. As is, of course, our Haworthia, which a lot of people will refer to as zebra plants. So that right there, that's my top three trifecta for indoor low light succulents. Next up, we have our easy fuzzy succulents. And my choice for this group has to be the panda plant also known as Kalanchoe tomentosa. And the entire plant is covered with this short little felty, velvety coating. So it really makes your houseplants a more sensory, tactile experience. And I know like when I pass this plant, I really can't help but, but give a little touch to the leaves. And also a great one if you have kids who like to touch plants but aren't gonna eat your plant because this one's not, not safe to eat. Um, and it's really a flexible, forgiving plant. I'll be honest, this particular one, I have not treated very well, and she is still a chugging along, but they can handle a pretty good range of light conditions and imperfect watering. Now, next up, alternate for this category would have to be the bear's paw, Cotyledon tomentosa. And it's also got that sweet, velvety, soft covering to the leaves, as well as just cute little, little claws to the paw. The reason it didn't make the top slot here is it's not as forgiving of imperfect watering just because it's got really chunky leaves so it's storing a lot of water so a lot of people will water too frequently and they'll lose leaves but if you're someone more like myself who habitually underwaters things this one is probably gonna be your best bet for an easy fuzzy succulent next up we have the trailing succulents and I love seeing these as part of a houseplant collection because they really do add a lot of levels and heights so that you can kind of connect your shelves together as they overflow around them. So my top pick for this category is this string of bananas and its Latin name is Senecio radicans and it truly does have these fun banana shaped leaves to it. 
and it's pretty forgiving of different light conditions because it's got this translucent leaf window, kind of a little bit of translucent tissue running along the leaf, and that's gonna let more sunlight enter into the leaf. Additionally, it's really prolific. Once you do get it into the right light and water conditions, it can just go crazy and you get a nice full covering on top like this, as well as stems that can grow up to three feet long. And those stems are also really easy to reroot. I think I saw, yeah, this one here, it's already sprouting these new little roots off of it. So this is a plant that wants to grow. And because those stems are so thin, this one can take a little bit more water than most of your succulents. Um, so for the kind of person who tends to overwater, this is a really great option. Next up, this friend over here is also a Senecio, even though it looks a little bit different. It's Senecio Jacobsenii, and its common name is the Weeping Jade, even though it's not really one of the true jades. It does have that same leaf shape to it and it tends to be more of a rambler, a sprawler, than a really true trailing plant. Um, but it's got these fun, thick, robust stems to it. So this is one that's gonna be able to store more water than our string of bananas over here. So this is a better option for our habitual underwaterer. Uh, additionally, something I love about this plant is its stress colors. So if you can get it into more direct sun, and stress it with a bit of drought, you're gonna see more and more of these kind of magenta flushes coming out. And that's just, it's, it's good stress, it's happy, but it gives a nice highlight to the plant. So whether you're an overwater or an underwater, these are both really easy, great trailing options. Next up, the easiest prolific succulents. So these are your really good growers. The ones that even if they have to be indoors in a pot, they're still gonna grow like crazy and they're gonna overflow and spill out nicely. So my top pick here is this elephant bush. It's Portulacaria afra, and it's a fantastic plant. It's just a really strong grower, even if it's not in ideal light. Um, it can also handle a lot of water and you'll notice a little wrinkling to the leaves when it's thirsty, so that gives you a clue that it's time to drench it. And for me, I use this as one of the plants that I kind of rotate around my house. So I still wanna be able to keep plants in the less than ideal light, like in the dining room, say, farther away from a window. So I know that this one can handle it there for a little while, and then eventually it'll get rotated back to the window, but it still looks great because it's already gonna be a long stemmy succulent, even if it's getting lots and lots of light. And it's also really easy to reroot as well. So easy one to share, to replant. And another bonus of it is it's non-toxic. It's uh, totally safe for pets, for children, for whoever eats it. Some people even make salads out of these leaves, so teach their own. Um, next up, alternate here, this is a Ripsalis, and this particular one is our coral cactus. And it is indeed a cactus, even though totally safe to touch, doesn't have the crazy cactus spines to it. But what it does have is these fun clusters of steg oh, excuse me, stem segments that make it this nice like bushy look to it while also being kind of a, a delicate, charming little, little plant. So both of these are really great options. The Ripsalis maybe wants a little bit more light, but this one is a total trooper. All right, next up, we have the easiest windowsill succulents. And windowsill is really an ideal place for a succulent. It's fun to just fill them up with a row of plants. But you have to pick a variety that can handle at least a couple hours of direct sun without getting a sunburn. So this one here is my first pick. It is called Corpuscularia leimanii. Don't be intimidated by that long name. It's just an ice plant. And so it's got kind of the typical chunky uh, leaves to it that are this glaucous blue green. But then it has a contrasting sort of bubble pink, bubblegum pink stem to it. And it grows this fun branching wild shape to it as well. And this is one that can handle more water than most succulents. And it's really good at showing you when it's thirsty as well. I think this one, yeah, on some of these leaves here, you see those wrinkles coming in? That's a sign that it's thirsty. So once I see those, I can deeply drench it. All is fine and dandy. And then, second choice for my windowsill succulents is this Senecio scoposis. And it's another one that's covered in a really thin coating of felt. It's kind of silvery white. 
and got these weird little bean shaped leaves to it. So this is a fun one. It starts clumping over time and can get a really full look to it. And then as it grows, those beans are gonna split out of the, the felty covering to them, sort of like a snake molting from its skin. Um, but either way, both of these are a really great plant, can handle some direct sun, and, uh, and they just look great on a windowsill because they're a unique foliage shape. So I feel like they contrast really well to the very classic, elegant, succulent rosette. The final category is easiest cactus. And this was actually a bit of a hard category for me to judge just because I kind of feel like a lot of cactus can be similarly easy when grown indoors as long as you have a lot of bright sun or a grow light and you're not over watering them. But I did end up picking a winner and it's this guy. This is Parodia Lenenhausii, the golden ball cactus. And it won the category because it is a gentle cactus. This is one that doesn't have crazy spines to it, so it's a really great option for in the house where you don't want to be worried about brushing up against it or, you know, the Apuntia glochids blowing off and barbing into someone's skin. So another great one if you have pets or kids running around. Um, and it's called Golden Ball Cactus, and when grown indoors in a pot, it probably will stay a little ball shape like this, but if it were growing outside, it would elongate into a tall columnar cactus, and they can even sprout new stems from the base. Also, our backup option here is the peanut cactus, uh, Echinopsis camisterius, and it's also got these nice, fun, long stems, but it can kind of sprawl in a cool way. And like our golden ball, it's not got crazy spines to it, so you can touch it without you know, injuring your, your fingies. And uh, the fun thing about these stems is they stand up more straight when they're full of water. So you can sort of watch it bend down and deflate a little bit as it uses up its water. So you can see that happening over here. This one's been getting more, water, oh, more light and less water than our green one over here. So it's doing that sprawly, bendy thing, and the stems have gone a little bit burgundy, which is pretty cool. Um, so both of these are great options for a nice, safe, gentle cactus. And like I said, when they're potted indoors, they're gonna stay pretty small when manageable. Okay, that was a ton of easy succulent varieties, and there's a whole bunch more out there too. But it definitely helps to have a little bit of know-how if you're new to caring for succulents. So let's move on to my three secrets for indoor succulent care. Starting with, pick the right variety for your location. And that's just because there's some succulents out there that are gonna be really easy to grow in one spot and then endlessly troublesome in another. So this requires you to be very realistic and observant about the spot that you've set aside for your plant. So not just is it inside or outside, but really try to assess things like how much light is it gonna get? How much airflow? How much room have I set aside for this plant and its pot to grow into? And how often do I tend to like to water my plants? And once you have all that information, you can use this really cool tool. It's the filters and they're always gonna be on the left-hand side of our catalog. And that's gonna help you weed out any varieties that are just not suitable for your location. Now, there's a couple of guidelines I can give you, sort of send you in the right direction. First off, over here, if you do have a sunny south-facing window or a grow light, you're gonna be able to grow those varieties with a lot more pink to red pigments in them. But if you don't, you're gonna probably wanna stay more in the green tones, just because these plants can tolerate more low indoor light. And then, uh, Bit of a hard and fast rule for me over here is the frost hardy succulents like Semper Vivum and Sedum. They really should just always be outside. They, they tend to languish a little bit indoors just because they don't get enough light, there's not great airflow, and they don't get those cold nights and winters that really help them thrive when they're outdoors. But our next video is gonna be all about the easiest outdoor succulents, so there'll be a ton more information on that. The next tip for your indoor succulents, and for your life really, is to keep on the sunny side. And that's just because, you know, these are really resilient plants, but light is so crucial for them to really thrive, be healthy, and look their best. Unfortunately, a plant that's not getting enough light is gonna be really quick to show you that it needs to move. 
So you can see a lot of those signs happening here. Things like the leaves at the bottom here are starting to point downward and they're fading to green and even to white. And then this stem has gone kind of tall, lanky and leggy and these big gaps have appeared between the leaves on the stem. So all of those things are telling me this plant needs to move into a sunnier location. Now, depending on your climate, a lot of growers avoid this by actually moving their houseplants outside during the summer. And I find a covered porch is really useful for this just because it's very important that your succulent has time to gradually adapt to harsher outdoor conditions, specifically brighter sunlight. Now, my poor little panda plant over here is a good example of this happening. You can see some legginess happening in about this area of the stem. And that was from this past winter. You know, it wasn't getting enough light indoors in the winter, so it stretched. Um, and then this part at the top, which is looking a lot better, that's all new growth since I've moved it outside. Uh, problem is, I did not fully acclimate this plant. And so you can see a little bit of succulent sunburn on it. It's this leaf right here. So it's not a whole lot, but really you can avoid that because it's not gonna go away just by taking your time, even two weeks, to gradually move it into brighter and brighter light. And as for the legginess in winter, it's really easy to do if you don't have those really great south facing windows. Um, so my best recommendation for you there is to get yourself a succulent grow light to help supplement the natural light. And we've got a whole blog on that. So for more information, check its link in the description. Third and final tip for your indoor succulents is to keep them dry. And you can make watering so much easier on yourself by A, using a pot with a drainage hole, and B, using a really gritty, well-draining soil. And one thing to keep in mind is that a heavy, waterlogged soil it's just gonna be one of the fastest ways to kill your succulent. Additionally, a succulent that's been underwatered is a lot easier to revive than one that's been overwatered and started to rot. So you're always gonna err on the side of less frequent watering. But how often should you water? You may be asking me. And a lot of people want a nice simple answer to this, like once a week. And unfortunately, I can't give that to you because it's just gonna vary so much based on your growing conditions, your type of plant you have, and even the time of year. But what I can tell you is the way to think about it is you really want your soil to completely dry out between waterings. And you're not gonna water your plant again until it shows signs of thirst. So for some varieties, that's gonna be those wrinkling of the leaves that we saw. And then for others, they're just gonna start to feel a little more flexible in the leaves. And at that point, you're ready to deeply drench your plant, enough so that you should see water running out the drainage hole at the bottom, like so. And with that, we are all ready to surround ourselves with succulent houseplants. Now you can shop the full category of easy indoor succulents at the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you wanna hear when our next video drops. Until next time, happy succulenting. Thank mm -hmm. you.